So next up, we will be awarding the hottie, which is Humanist of the Year. And the person awarding the hottie to the person receiving the hottie is the hottie over there, <laughs> Jeff Newman, <laughs> president. So each year, the uh, Board of Trustees, HECO, um, selects a Humanist of the Year. And despite the title, um, it's not just based on necessarily what someone has done in any one given year, although we certainly take that into account, but we also sometimes take into account the person's long-term involvement, long-term participation in humanism in Central Ohio. So, um, ninjas. I, I say this not just because ninjas are awesome, but, um, you know, I was interested to read a while back that aside from cartoons and movies and so forth, there actually were really such a thing as ninjas. And um, real ninjas apparently did not walk around like dressed in all black with just this lock of their eyes, you know, because then you could say, oh, that's a ninja, let's get him. <laughs> um, what they did was they dressed in ordinary kind of way and mixed in with population. And they would just be mixed in with the population, dressed in an ordinary way, doing ordinary, unassuming things. And they would seem totally ordinary right up to like, you know, assassinate you. <laughs> so, you're probably wondering what this has to do with the Humanist of the Year. Um, the Humanist of the Year um, does not literally assass assassinate anyone. Aww. That being said, um, while, while often flying under the radar, while not making any particular effort to draw attention to himself, he comes up on some really important, important tasks and assassinates them. <laughs> um, he assassinates work on the bylaws. Um, he, you know, assassinates putting content on our website. Um, he, you know, quietly watches over the years just like a ninja and thus is a source of history for the organization. You know, keeps us in touch with what we've been 5, 10, 15 years ago. Um, he's had quite a few positions with us. He's been involved in the HCCO ever since 1995. Um, has had numerous terms on the board, including up to the present time. Um, has served as president. Has served as treasurer. Has served as newsletter editor. Has served as assistant editor has been on a variety of committees, including being the chair for the Winter Solstice Banquet, and has done a variety of online advocacy for secular humanist values and policies. Um, and all that would be enough even to start with, but I also want to mention that the person we're awarding the Humanist of the Year Award to um, has had some real challenges, you know, has had some physical health problems and had to overcome them. And when a lot of people face health problems, you know, it's tempting to say, this is too hard for me, I'm just going to take care of myself, not worry about all this activist and community stuff. And I have enormous respect for someone who will overcome challenges like that and step up and be part of the community. And so, it is, thank you very much, <laughs> um, my pleasure to award the Central Ohio 2013 Humanist of the Year to Doug Berger. I'm sorry, I didn't bring any books today. I didn't know that that was a requirement. <laughs> Uh, reminds me, first time I was elected uh, president in 2001, and they said, Doug, you're going to have to lead the meeting. So I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't like doing that too much. But I did have a few remarks uh, I'd like to read, if you don't mind. I know you're probably tired of hearing me talk already <laughs> from earlier. But uh, thank you, Jeff, and the board for this year for deciding to give me this award. Uh, your checks are in the mail. <laughs> Through all the years and work with HCCO, I never did do it to win an award. I tend to have trouble being the center of attention. My reward has always been to bring in at least one new member or make someone happy to be part of this great group. You like computers. That was the question that eventually led me to the humanist community of Central Ohio back in the mid-90s. 
one of the founders, Larry Rica, happened to work in the same building that I did as a, when I was working as a security guard. He would come in before I left at 7 in the morning, and we would talk briefly. He found out that I had a blazing fast 300 baud modem on a first generation IBM PC, and I like to call it bulletin board system. Uh, for you young people, uh, <laughs> bulletin board system was what the internet was before the internet. Larry said he had started a BBS for his humanist group, HCCO, and I should check it out and let him know if I found anything wrong with it or any issues with it, because it just opened up. I think uh, my first visit to that BBS lasted hours. I think I was even too tired to work the next day. Uh, I read just about every text document that was there, and I knew then that my worldview had a name, humanism, and that others believed just like I did. That's how I met uh, Derek for the first time, was on that board. And my search for an identity was over. The first meeting I attended was a monthly meeting at the old Ponderosa restaurant on Tangent River Road. That's where the BC Roosters is now. And I think before that was Pon Bonanza or something like that. Uh, after meeting the others in the group, I decided I need to be a member and after about a year or so, I took the plunge into the leadership of the group by serving on the Board of Trustees for the first time. And the rest is, they say, history. I love the idea that one could live without God, and you didn't need all the ritual and baggage of a church. Church was the main turnoff for me as I made my transition to being a humanist. The sermons were boring, and none of it spoke to me or what was going on in my life. Someone giving inspirational gibberish didn't pay my bills or address any family issues I may have had at the time. I hated the idea of some person standing up on an altar trying to tell me how to be a good person. Who were they to give me advice? HCCO has the things that mean the most to me. Democracy, consensus, reason, and compassion. You don't need to be a certain gender, race, age, or income level to be a good secular person. All of us are on the same level. As long as we agree with our principles, pay our dues, and end. <laughs> we can freely participate in the direction of the group. Uh, back in 2002, when I was serving my second term as president, I gave a talk at the first UU Sunday Forum. The title of my talk was Humanist Ice Cream. I wanted to highlight that there were different flavors of humanism in the wild. I know today the general consensus is to frown on qualifiers like secular humanism or religious humanism. We are all supposed to be just humans. And we are. We all have the same goal, or we want to reach the same conclusion, but we each take a different path to get there. That is where the flavors come in. While personally I don't do church, even a secular one, I can't fault people who get something out of meeting on a Sunday to sing songs and listen to inspirational messages. As long as we are going to the same place, and we aren't letting theists define us, it doesn't matter how we get there. HCCO has played a large part in the ups and downs of my life, and for that, I appreciate the group immensely. Although my checkbook may be small, it's good to know that my friends here kept me participating in whatever capacity I could. And for that, I will be forever grateful. Thank you.